pound is continuing to push higher against the US dollar, but continues to see momentum is not picking up at the same pace as price action. Now, that is still continuing to be uh, an interesting development here because while we are still seeing those gains and it's supported by uh, things like that uh, stronger jobs report that we saw from the UK on Tuesday, the fact that we're not seeing a significant uplift in momentum at the same time still concerns me uh, that we are still in the latter part of this rally. Now, that, of course, could change. These momentum indicators, in this case, the stochastic and the MACD, they're only there to guide as to what momentum looks looks like but that doesn't mean momentum can't change so when we're seeing divergences like we are continuing to see it doesn't necessarily mean that we're about to see reversal in the rally it's just very much a red flag that it could be uh it could be appearing and those red flags are very much still there because momentum is still not confirming what we're seeing in price action now ultimately price action is the core indicator and should always be considered so. Uh, but you, it is always helpful when we do have the momentum indicators confirming what the price is telling us. But what we are still seeing is that 137 to 138 area is continuing to see uh, some resistance as far as this currency pair uh, is concerned. And while if we look at the jobs data from yesterday, for example, from the UK, it was encouraging. Unemployment didn't rise as high as we were expected back in November. Uh, claimant count was lower than than we were expected, which is obviously a positive thing, and wages accelerated faster than expected as well. So all three indicators here were more positive, but we have to remember as well that the November lockdown was far less strict than what we currently have and are going to con continue to see here in the UK uh, in the near term. The promising thing as far as the UK is concerned is the fact that we are seeing cases continuing to fall quite rapidly. The vaccine rollout uh, is also progressing smoothly uh, as well. So it does create some optimism going into the second quarter, despite the rumours that are continuing to circulate about the prospect of a prolonged lockdown. So there are some uh, supportive indicators here as far as the medium term outlook for the economy is concerned. But the unemployment data going into the first quarter may not be quite as good as it can continues to currently look. Now, the other flip side of this, of course, is the US side. And one of the, uh, the, the, the key events as far as this evening is concerned is the Fed uh, decision, the statement and the press conference that comes after it as well. Now, some of the nerves with regards to the US Federal Reserve have circled around the prospect of more stimulus under the Biden administration, $1.9 trillion being the target uh, and what that means for inflation, what that means for bond buying uh, and interest rates as well. The words taper tantrum that are being thrown around once again, we have seen US yields rising on the back of this uh, particular prospect. So it's going to be really key. Two things that we are looking for as far as the Fed is concerned this evening. We are looking for more uh, signals that the outlook is looking more promising, not just because of the prospect of more stimulus, but also because the economy has held up much better over the course of the last couple of months than it had previously anticipated. We've already had murmurings about this from various Fed officials over the last few weeks, and I expect that's going to be part of the core statement as far as this evening is concerned. That will keep investors on board. The other thing as well is in respect to bond buying and interest rates. I expect we're going to see some very dovish uh, statements as far as the Fed is, Fed is concerned. I think we're going to see a lot more affirmation that, uh, that, that, that we're not going to see rates rising, that we're not going to see tapering while fighting a pandemic and that there's going to be a prolonged period uh, of ultra low interest rates. Again, reaffirming its previous position that interest rates are going to remain low beyond uh, the point where inflation is anticipated to hit target. Uh, these slight tweaks to the uh, its own mandate that we saw last year probably being really reaffirmed here. The Fed knows that these markets need their hands held. Uh, and I think we're going to see a lot more of that in the near term, because if we do see a pullback from that kind of commitment, then I do think we are going to potentially see a bit of a wobble in these markets. If the Fed can continue to push that dovish message, that could be supportive for the cable pair in the near term as it pushes on 138, all eyes then turning really to 140. Uh, but again, the momentum indicators, I think, are going to be key. And something like the Fed uh, really reaffirming this dovish message could be one thing that potentially pushes those momentum indicators back in favour of price action.